These days, people can record an entire album and play dozens of convincingly authentic sounding and rare instruments from a single computer. How did this come to be? How did we get from needing a large studio with a staff and millions of dollars worth of equipment to just needing a few hundred dollars for a laptop, mic and keyboard, and a single person to turn it all on and to go on to produce a hit record. I'm Chris Moses, and this is Gospel Progressions University. I wanna say welcome to anyone that's viewing my videos on my channel for the first time. You're in for a treat, you're gonna get a lot of information here. If you're into computer technology and you're into keyboards and keyboard sounds, well, I think this video is for you. This is the first video in a series of videos discussing music and technology. Typically on this channel, I don't always talk about music and technology, but this is something that I use almost every single day. Just to give you some context, let's look at who came up with this VST idea. The German musical software and hardware company, Steinberg, would harness the computational and ever-increasing processing power of computers. In 1996, they released the first VST. In order to appreciate what a VST is, we also have to look at what a DAW is. DAW, D-A-W, stands for Digital Audio Workstation. It's computer software that's used to capture or record audio, also to process it. This is where these VSTs kind of live. They can run by themselves, but most of the time, if someone refers to a VST, they're gonna be talking about software inside of software in your computer. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology. So technically what it is, it's a protocol for computer-based digital audio. In essence, it's software that is plugged in to existing software. VST's job is to integrate software synths and effects units in something called a digital audio workstation. So I threw out some terms there, software synth, effects units. A software synth or soft synth is software that generates digital audio for music. So just think of a piano, guitar, even percussive music like drums, uh, Latin percussion, rear percussion, exotic, digidaroo, whatever, any instrument that can be played, you'll likely have it as a software center. An effects unit is a hardware or software device that alters the sound of an instrument or source of audio when sound is played through it. So think of a guitarist like wah pedal and those different effects pedals that they use. So when Steinberg released the VST specifications back in the 90s, then they released the DAW, the DAW called Cubase VST back in 1996, it was the first DAW to support the VST standard, creating a complete professional studio environment on the PC or the Mac. This was all made possible by leveraging the computer's ever-increasing processing speed and memory. This new VST allowed plugins to interface with the DAW and use the built-in power of the PC or Mac without needing an external processor or external hardware like what other systems were using back in the 90s. Steinberg continued to develop VST. Fast forward to 1999, they released VST 2.0, which was a game changer for musicians. VST 2.0 made it possible for plugins to receive MIDI data. For those not in the know, I'll give a more in-depth explanation of what MIDI is in the next video. But for now, all you need to know is that it's the standard for digital keyboards to interface with computers. It makes it possible for computers to talk to keyboards and keyboards to talk to computers. By incorporating MIDI, this became the final piece that would usher in the development of VSTI, or Virtual Studio Technology Instruments. This became known as Virtual Instruments or Software Sense. A VSTI is software that runs inside the DAW, or it could be software that runs in a plugin that runs in the DAW. That's like software that's inside of software, inside of software. Yes, I know it's very meta and inception-like, but the concept will make more sense as we go on. There are some parameters like VST effect units plugins that can be controlled via MIDI, but it's really the ability to play back pretty much any instrument that changed the game for musicians like us. As Steinberg continued to develop the VST protocol, as of 2022, the most current VST is VST 3.67, and that was released back in 2017. Many components were added to enhance the realness of playing virtual instruments with such things like assigning parameters to play an instrument. This allows musicians to manipulate the instrument with a dial, a knob, a button, a sliding fader, or whatever hardware slash keyboard that supports MIDI. Things like MIDI expression pedals used to emulate the swell pedal of an organ that could be used for an organ VSTI. 
or a wind controller that I could play back in a wind instrument, VSTI, for example. Currently, all virtual instruments on the market use Steinberg's VSTI format. VST has completely changed how musicians, including myself, play and create music. For years, I swore by a digital piano because, like some of you, I was ignorant of this groundbreaking technology. Plus, it was super new when I first started playing keys. VST plugins come in three flavors. VST instruments. These generate audio. They are generally either virtual synthesizers or virtual samplers. Many recreate the look and the sound of famous hardware synths. Some prominent VST instruments include Discovery, Nexus, Salent One, Massive, FM8, Absinthe, Reactor, Superior Drummer, and my personal favorite, Omnisphere Keyscape. VST effects. These do not generate audio, rather, they process audio like what you're hearing right now. They perform the same functions as real life hardware audio processors, such as reverbs and phasers. You'll often see a VST effects processor be a digital twin with the exact user interface layout as its hardware counterpart. This is convenient because quality studio hardware effects units are either crazy expensive or just unavailable to purchase. VST MIDI effects. What this does is process MIDI messages. You won't get audio from this either. But for example, you can transpose and arpeggiate and route the MIDI data to other VST instruments or to hardware devices. So for instance, here's a patch in Omnisphere referred to as Aggravated pulse. You'll see why in a second. And when I say patch, I'm also referring to the sound, the tone that's being generated, or the name of the tone that the creator came up with. So let's just say I want to play uh, an ostinato um, out of these notes here, C minor. But I can't really do that effectively. First of all, the way the patch is designed, it's not necessarily designed for me to play it in a staccato. Uh, uh, fashion or just playing it you know fast it's it's more of a padded sound for electronic dance music however if i throw an arpeggiator in there while i'm using logic that's what i'm using i'll just go ahead and throw that on and i can just do a little pattern here playing that or just demonstrating that to you you can see how much work you don't have to do when you use an arpeggiator. That's just one example of using an arpeggiator. This MIDI that we're going to discuss in depth in the next video is more of a music or note manipulator than it is a processor. The arpeggiator plugin assists me in what I'm trying to create at the same time helping me to reduce my workload or effort. This would also be an example of using a plugin Omnisphere with an additional MIDI plugin in tandem to create a musical effect. The DAWs or DAW's D digital audio workstations actually host the plugins, like I said before. One plugin that specifically are for Macs is called Logic Pro, and that's what I'm currently using to run Omnisphere. In part, and of course, I'm just giving you the scratch in the surface here, but Omnisphere, what I'm using is a synthesizer plugin. Questions like these are sure to plague some of you. Which one is better for me? What's the difference? Should I get a keyboard I can play without a computer? Or is it better to use a computer with it? What kind of computer should I get? Where can I get VSTIs? Do I have to get a new keyboard? If you want to learn more and get started incorporating music technology in your band practices or church services, you can download my free guide at mychurchband.com forward slash jumpstart. The link is in the description. If you want to get started using this technology with your church or band right away, this will help you to navigate your way into the world of VSTI. This is where I give you step-by-step -step instructions to jumpstart your journey. In the next video in this series, we'll discuss some of the different types of keyboards, along with the advantages and disadvantages of each one. God bless you, and I will see you in the next video.